Hello and welcome to the Solar Business with Blaine Bartlett. I am your host, Blaine Bartlett, and um, we've got a heck of a show for you guys today. Um, the fellow that I'm going to be speaking with, I fell in love with, uh, David uh, Meltzer and I were uh, uh, having him on uh, one of our office hour uh, sessions not too long ago, and that 15-minute segment was just way too short for what I wanted to accomplish. And that what I wanted to accomplish was to really do a deep dive in, into what Simon Cohen is up to. Um, Simon is the uh, chairman of, of the Henkel Group uh, out of Mexico. And what's important for you to understand on this is, and I'm gonna just gonna read something here. Um, he was the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year in 2013 and 14. He's awarded the most trusted CEO of 2017 uh, in Mexico, uh, Harvard University, and this is where it gets interesting. Harvard University made a case study of the work that he's done with his company, Henko. And yeah, it's just fascinating. So when we think of compassionate capitalism, when we think of connecting to the soul of business, if I could wave a magic wand and have an exemplar appear before me of what that's all about, it would be Simon Cohen. So Simon, I wanna just welcome you to the show and I am so looking forward to this conversation. Wow, brother, thank you very much, Blaine. It's an honor to be here with you again. It's awesome to see you in the screen by Zoom, these magical times that we can do this uh, from, uh, from distance. So thank you very much for having me here. It's an honor to speak with you and your audience. Well, um, and the honor is truly all mine. Um, a couple of things that we're going to touch on. One is a book that you wrote called Fulfilled. And I've been reading the book, and I want to thank you for sending it to me. I mean, I'm, I'm just enthralled with the book, and I, I knew I wouldn't be disappointed, and I'm certainly not. Um, and there's some things in here that I want to touch on. But before we get to that, um, you know, when I talk about the soul of business, I've got a very specific thing that I think of. And the work that you've done with Henko and just kind of how you actually live your life. When you hear the phrase, the soul of business, what does that kind of bring up for you? Sure, Blaine. Um, for me, business is a part of life, not uh, the other way around. So we're living right now. We cannot stop living and start working. And that's it. We need to put everything together. So for me, you know, working in a happy atmosphere, in a safe atmosphere, when you can be yourself, when you can express yourself, when you can be passionate about what you do, that's part of being um, happy and to have a fulfilled life. So um, for me, the soul of business is how you take care of others, how others take care of you, how everybody protects the brand that you, are, that you work for, and how can you create value, uh, not only uh, economical value, but also emotional value uh, uh, and value for the people and for them to have also a very, very happy and fulfilled, joyful life. Yeah. And um, what's interesting, and I kind of figured that's where you go with this, <laughs> just uh, based on our previous conversation. But yeah, you've got a logistics company, and, um, and you're one of the most successful logisticians uh, on the planet. I mean, Harvard doesn't do case studies on people that don't make a difference here. How I mean, I mean, this is a this is a blue collar nuts and bolts, you know, kind of you know, shipping stuff across the ocean, yeah, you know, in containers. I mean, everything that you can imagine around shipping logistics. How does caring for people come into play with that? And how have you used that ethos to build your company? Because yeah, Henko has been one of the best places to work in Mexico for literally years and years and years. And so what's 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 the secret sauce there for you? So Blaine, first of all, um, I have to tell you that you're wrong. I don't have a logistics company. I have a happiness company that happens to do logistics, okay? So okay. My, my, my purpose in life is to have the happiest company in the world. And whatever we do, it doesn't matter. We're going to be the best at it. And we're going to be the best because we're happy. And it's not the opposite. Uh, everybody asks me, why are you, you're happy because you're successful. And I tell them, no, it's all the way around. I am successful because I'm happy. So every time you work in, in, in a right sequence, you cannot, you, you cannot wipe your nose and then sneeze, right? That's the wrong sequence. So we need to have the right sequence. So first we have to define the purpose. Why are you here? What, are, what do you live for? What is your passion? What is that you want to leave a legacy for your kids, your grandchildren? <clears throat> Excuse me. What do you want to do with your life? And this is part of everything. And you cannot separate working 
from sleeping, from uh, entertainment, from uh, having family, because everything is under the umbrella of, the, of our life. So you cannot be happy if you don't happy at work. You cannot yeah. have a happy life if you don't have a fulfilled job. So it's, it's a matter you of know, a balance. You, you, you write in your book here, uh, when success comes at the expense of your health, your family, or your friends, it's not success. Absolutely not. Absolutely not, Blaine. You know, for example, you know, in the first uh, years of my business, I was successful economically, but I was totally miserable in my personal life. So this epiphany that happens to me, that happened to me in China, uh, made me realize that that's not the most important thing in life. Obviously, we need economical income. We need, you know, economical safety. We, we need to have a, an income. But the most important things after a certain base, it's, it's, it's the family, your friends, obviously yourself. Uh, we need to work for that, but also we need to work for pleasure, for fulfillment. And that's the name of the book, Fulfill, uh, Fulfilled. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it's, it's right here. Yeah, you've got a happiness uh, company that, yeah, there it is right there. And I've got, I'll show my right copy there. too. Yeah, show, <laughs> show, show what I wrote, show them what I wrote to you. It's, it's oh, I love piece, this. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we have, we'll see if we can get this in front of the There you go. There we go. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Oh. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So, that you can, that you have a fulfilled life so that you cannot distinguish if you're living or dreaming, right? Beautiful. Yeah. I wish you have an amazing life so full of love and harmony that you can't distinguish if you're living or dreaming. Now, when you've got a life that is built on that ethos, when you've got a life that is organized around that principle, um, yeah, you're cooking with gas, <laughs> as, my, as my grandfather used to say. Um, you know, I, there, the chapter sections in this, and I, and I apologize to the viewers here, but I, I, I'm, I'm excited about this book. You've got to get this book. Um, but chapter one, we have two lives. The second one begins when we realize we only have one. Sure. Let me clarify that. That quote is not mine. That's, that's Confucius. And, Confucius, um, yes. I really love that quote, and that's part of my life. So this is where I tell the story, and maybe we can go into each chapter. It's only eight chapters. But, you know, this story goes that I was traveling in China and I was diagnosed with a heart problem. I was so freaking stressed that I almost died. So I had this thing in my mind that I was, I was working for money, money, money. I wanted to be a billionaire. I said, if you can, I can. If someone else can, I can. If Jeff Bezos can, I can. If Bill Gates can, I can. You know, I will do <laughs> the same and I will just become a billionaire. And my only goal in life was to make money. And I was totally wrong. Totally, totally, totally wrong. And um, one day I realized that uh, health is the most valuable treasure. And you will see it in chapter, I think, three or four. And for me, it's that, that that's very important. Everybody knows that, but nobody is conscious about it. So that's why I put that, uh, that beautiful quote from Confucius uh, right there at the beginning. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, I, I gave a TED talk recently um, and I began the talk with, you know, uh, I, uh, a truth. And I basically said to the audience right at the beginning, there's 8 billion people on this planet. In 100 years, every single one of them are going to be dead, including you, including me. Now, just think about that. 8, bill, eight billion people dead in 100, in 100 years. So the question is not, are we going to die? The question is, how are we living? And even more importantly, we're dying each day. What's the do I die a death that sets up a new life tomorrow morning? That is one that I want to live. So the quality of my dying makes a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, the fear of death, you know, it's um, fear of living comes from fear of death. So when you stop yes. fearing death, you can start living because death is something that it's, on a, you know, unavoidable. You, you and me, we're going to die one day. I hope that yeah. it's not it's not today or tomorrow, right? We're, we're just there in line. We're just there in line waiting for you know someone to choose us, and you know one day we will pass away. But the the only thing that I'm waiting for is how to live as happy as possible and how to change many people's life within my lifetime that I can just be remembered for a person that really brought a smile to to, to millions and millions of people in the world. Yeah. And, and that's uh, honestly, I think that's the difference between living a meaningless life and leaving and living a meaningful death. 
Correct. living into Absolutely. a meaningful death. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, there's there's a Mark Twain quote. I, I just don't remember exactly. But, you know, fear of death comes from fear of living. And uh, a man that is fulfilled, um, I lost you. Can, can you hear me there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, a man that has a, yeah, yeah. a person that has a fulfilled life is ready to die any day. So, yeah. so maybe if you have a fulfilled life, we, we're ready. Uh, I mean, so we're, not, I, we're not looking forward to it, but we're ready. <laughs> no, well, Woody Allen says, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not afraid of death. I just don't want to be there when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> so, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the idea here, yeah, the, that whole, in, in, the idea of fulfillment and, and both happiness and fulfillment, and there's a difference, I think, uh, and at least to me, there's a difference between this. And yeah, happiness is inwardly generated and fulfillment is the consequence of actually living fully in, in, in my life. And I was struck when you said, yeah, Blaine, you're wrong. I don't have a logistics company. I've got a happiness company. Uh, so one of the things that I want to you know, just kind of leverage here is, and, and this is what I was so intrigued with when I first met you, is tapping into that happiness. Yeah, you can't artificially create happiness for somebody else, but you can invite them to go inside and discover what makes them happy. And then the work process becomes an exercise in fulfillment. Does work fulfill me as an extension of who I am? Sure. How, sure. How, sure. how have you done that with, with Henko? Because, yeah, yeah it, it's, you know, logistics have been around for, yeah, for forever. So sure. you're not inventing new jobs, yeah, for people to do. What are you making different there? No, let, let me tell you, first of all, the title of the book is Fulfilled. And it's fulfilled because there's a word in Spanish that it's pleno. Pleno means happiness 360. Yeah. Okay, pleno, mm. that means that you are happy in every single stage of your life. If you see at any, let's say, um, uh, chapter of your life, you're happy with your personal life, with your business life, with your, uh, um, I would say, uh, your couple or your partner, uh, with your sons, your, your kids, your friends. You know, whenever you look at your life, you're, you're happy with it. And that means pleno. Pleno means I'm happy in every single sense. And the only word that I could translate in English, it was fulfilled. So I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm fulfilled in any sense. So that's why, you know, the book is, is called like that. And on the other hand, uh, Blaine, I believe that what I'm doing different is that I'm taking care of people the way I want them to take care of me, right? See, if we respect mm -hmm. each other as human beings, then we can we can make a difference. It's so simple and so hard at the same time. We don't have we don't have authority on top of anyone's life. We just have influence and positive or negative. I decided to be a positive influence to my teammates. And I decided to be a positive influence to my suppliers, my customers, and even my competitors. What I really want is to change this world for the better. What I really want is to put a smile in each person when they say my name or when they read something about me or they read something about my company. Henko is not the biggest company in the world. Henko, you know, we, we have been awarded in Harvard and in London Business School and in many, many places. I can, I can give you a list of the awards that we have. And it's only because we want to be happy. And they awarded us because we take care of our people as human beings. That's it, period. It's not because we're the biggest company in the world, because we're not. It's not because I'm the wealthiest person in the world, because I'm not. It's because I don't want to be the wealthiest on the cemetery. I want to be the happiest here in this planet. Yeah, yeah. I, Simon, I love that. And the, the idea of uh, you know, taking care of people, and I don't mean taking care of in the sense of uh, paternalistically, taking care of in terms of making it possible for them to actually live a full life for themselves. Yeah. Can, can you talk, I mean, and, and I'm really, and I don't know the answer to this, so I apologize, but I just want to ask you know, this question. Yeah. When you've got people that come into the company, you know, when you hire, uh, what's the onboarding process? Because the culture is really different than what most people would typically think of. I would imagine from a logistics transport company. What's, what's your onboarding process that begins to uh, ensure that the culture remains what it is that you want it to be? Yeah. So first of all, we I don't do it myself. They, they yeah. do it, you know, the company. <clears throat> this is not something that it's faked. This is something that it's genuine. So from the, the first interview, 
they can feel the energy. Obviously, right now, right now we're working from home, and that makes a bit different. You know, the situation. <clears throat> I'm sorry about the feelings and the atmosphere and the energy that you feel when you arrive to a company, to an office, whatever. And right now we're doing it from home. And when we have an onboard, a new a new member, we give them a very warm welcome. We teach them about the company. We show them a couple of videos of how we live everyday life in Henko, and then how we can make a difference. We are not talking about how to make things. We hire for attitude, not for aptitude. So the knowledge I can teach it to you. Logistics is not rocket science. It's something that can be learned. We hire for attitude. Someone that it's a giver, <clears throat> someone that wants to give service, that wants to serve others because we're a service company, okay? So we really mm -hmm. hire for attitude. And when they come in, we make you know the best of it. We uh, uh, receive them with a big smile. We put all the effort in for them to make uh, them feel at home. And uh, <clears throat> I personally send them an email, a, a welcome letter, and all these things that you know um, make them feel uh, welcome. Mm -hmm. So it's that it's that welcoming beginning. You know, you, you're joining a family, basically. You're joining a healthy family. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what we want them to feel. And uh, this is a good energy. And you can see that in, I believe, chapter six in the book. Um, sorry to go back to the book, but, you know, I believe that all the topics, all the all the little uh, quotes that are under the title of each chapter, that says a lot about the book. So um, you, you were reading. Really, happy people. <laughs> right. High performance, happy people. That's the name of our culture. And if you go uh, to the index and you read the little quotes under the chapters, you know, I believe that uh, there's a lot of meaning right there and it explains everything of what we do. There's no secrets here. And why there's no secret? Because I believe that the more you share with the world, the better energy that you receive, right? So yeah. I don't care if my competitors or anyone else in the world reads this book. I really believe that if we turn into better human beings because of my presence, but it lasts with uh, on my absence, that will make me a, a leader, a true leader. So I, yeah. I, I just don't care. I'm a giver. I really want to give everything away, right? Center of distribution. Yeah, you know, we're going to take a real quick break here. When we come back, I want to, you know, in you know, listeners to this uh, podcast have heard me mention this notion of being a center of distribution before, but I want to talk about that in a little bit more detail in the context of what we're looking at right now. Right now, we're uh, talking with Simon Cohen, uh, the chairman of Henko. We're going to take a real brief break. We'll be back in just a minute. I want to thank you for listening. Um, I want to also invite you right now to go to blainebartlett.com. And on that site, which is my personal website, you'll see uh, services up on the top menu. I'd like you to click on Leadership Mastermind. Now, why I want you to do that is we have uh, structured a mastermind program that is very unusual and it is very powerful. And by going on to that site and clicking that link, you'll be taken to a landing page that is an invitation to join this mastermind. It's a 52 week long exploration of what it takes to be a highly effective leader in today's fast changing environment. You won't regret it. And if you've been liking what you've been listening to on these Soul of Business podcasts, how does one become a leader that can keep connection to the soul of business. That's what we look at. That's what we're about in this mastermind program. So again, go to blainebartlett.com and click on the services link. And there you'll find the link to the leadership mastermind program. Look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for listening to this little commercial. And now back to our show. Welcome back. You're listening to Blaine Bartlett. This is the Soul of Business with Blaine Bartlett. Uh, Simon, uh, we were talking just before we took the break about, um, or at least I was talking about, you had referenced it, being a center of distribution. And for you know, I've got a very specific way of thinking about that. And you know, nature for me is a teacher. I mean, I grew up on a farm. I, I mean, I, I've, I've got 10 acres out here that are a hectare that I walk around that's on the water and I'm out on the, I'm out in nature all the time. 
And one of the things that I've noticed is that there is nothing in nature that seems to be focused on accumulation. Everything serves as a center of distribution. I mean, yeah, the, 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 the fruit trees, they, yeah, they, 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 they have nutrients that come in and fruit is born, but then the fruit drops to the ground and the deer eat it. And it's, it's all a center of distribution. And businesses, and I think Henko is a really good example of this, uh, that position themselves uh, as centers of distribution. And I don't mean this in a, <laughs> in a uh, pun sort of a way, because you are a logistics organization. I mean, that's what you do do uh, is logistics. How do, how do you ensure that, that the notion of being a center of distribution as opposed to a center of accumulation keeps itself present in the way that you operate the company and interact with your stakeholders as varied as they are, the customers, your suppliers, your employees, you know, just that whole notion of center of distribution. Sure, I have this, this uh, mentality or this mantra that says, the more you give, the more you get. And this is the way I think, I am a giver. I was born and I was educated to, to serve others. And this is, this is my personality. So when I became the owner of a company and we started this business, I really wanted people to feel the same way as I did. I was, I was, I don't know, I was, I was trying to be like really humble, right? To put my feet on the ground always. And not because I had this title of founder or CEO of the company, I was different than them. So I really want them to feel the same way as I did. And I wanted people to feel the same way of belongingness and this ownership. So I decided to treat everyone else as owners. So if you want people to think as owners, you have to make them owners. And that's what I did. So when I started taking care of people as friends or as brothers or sisters, you know, the result was incredible. And I realized that uh, we were growing and growing and we were having fun and we were enjoying the process. And it was a process that was uh, it was fun. It, it was, um, I don't know, full of laughter full of good energy. And uh, again, you know, I just realized that that was a very nice recipe for success. And uh, when you saw the results, it was like, boom, 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 growth, growth, growth. So there's no, there's no fail on that. So I decided to keep doing it that way. So, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe that's, uh, that's part of my philosophy. That's what, how I learned. You know, there's, there's a phrase that I love in chapter three that says, try to be so great that everybody wants to be with you. Uh, that everybody be, wants to be like you and to be so humble that everybody wants to be with you. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to be humble that if people want, wanted to be with me, that they stick to me. And I really wanted to be great people who wanted to follow me. So it, it was like kind of a different approach to life. And it was uh, yeah. awkward because I wanted to be great and humble at the same time. It's like being fat and thin at the same time. It's, it's not easy. So, so how can you be tall and short at the same time? So, so I decided to just uh, try to put that in practice, to be uh, ambitious and humble at the same time. And that's, that's very important. You know, what's interesting about that for me is I, I, approach, I approach my business uh, uh, as a spiritual discipline. And you know, when I say a spiritual discipline, great yeah, you know, you know, the, the great teachings always uh, have room to hold paradox. Yeah, you know, how do I be tall and short at the same time? Well, you know, that's the paradox. I mean, it was possible to do that. How, be, how do I be great and humble at the same time? If you're approaching it that way, you know, it requires really taking a look at yourself in the mirror. And that's why I think this is a spiritual discipline to run a company in the way that you run ENCO. It, it's a spiritual practice because you're continuously growing. You're continuously checking in on yourself. Um, you know, the, the, the last uh, year and a half, 18 months or so in the midst of this pandemic, from a, from a perspective of a, a company that uh, uh, is, is in the logistics space, I would imagine that you've had some challenges. Yeah. yeah. As a consequence yeah. of, of some of the stuff that's gone on. Yeah. How have, how have you been able to... Yeah, how have you been able to keep the happy piece in front of we're a logistics company and we have to stay in business? Listen, the first day that uh, we faced the, the, the pandemic, it was March 13. I remember that day is, you know, it's very vivid. Um, it was March 13, 2020. 
And I approached my staff and I told them, I don't know what's going to happen. What I know is that nobody's going to get fired. Even if I have to put all my money into your pockets, nobody's going to get fired. So you are safe. So don't worry. If we are going to make less money, we are all going to make less money. So we're all in this together. And if we sink, we sink together. And if we thrive, we thrive together. So the first three months were terrible. You know, the logistics world stopped, collapsed. But then yeah. suddenly boomed. So that, that conversation with my staff came back to me. And when I was super busy, they, they told me, Simon, no worries, we're with you. You were with us, now we're with you and we're on this together. So it was an amazing energy. I told them, hey, I will protect you in this if this ship sinks. And they mm -hmm. told me, Simon, if we're thriving, we're thriving highly and we're going to just go big. We're going to grow a lot. So this year has been amazing. Uh, within the last 12 months, we have made incredible uh, sales. We have been growing like crazy. It's It's been just an unbelievable, let's say, last 12 months. And um, I thank my people for that. And, I, and I, I'm always going to be grateful to them because they are the ones doing this magic. They are the ones producing. They are the ones taking care of the customers. They are the ones taking care of the shipments and they're just amazing. My team is just outstanding. I, I applaud them every single day. I thank them every single minute because they are just incredible. Yeah, I, I can't think of a better story to illustrate for me what compassionate capitalism is. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. compassion. It's not soft and squishy. It's, it's hard edged. You, know, you, you, you make some tough decisions. Uh, when you're actually serving in the way that you're talking about serving. Yeah. How do yes, I make and sure people... Yeah. True. And some, some people, you know, for example, their husbands or wives, they lost their jobs. And some people, right. for example, they worked in cinemas or in bars or in restaurants and they were closed. So no income, zero. So with the income that they had from us, they were living both of them or the entire family. So I, I really wanted to take care of them. And with yeah. zero income, you know, how can you move? How can you eat? You cannot be happy if you're hungry or store or cold, if you're starving. I mean, it's not logical. It's not possible, Blaine. Yeah. So what I did is like, okay, let's, let's, let's keep it calm. Everybody here is safe and your families are going to be okay. And if I have to sell my, my, my house or every single belonging that I have, I will do it for you guys. So when the, yeah. the, the, the things came all the way around, it was a big surprise for me also because things, um, things went well and, and, and they, they, they were super, super kind with the company. They give the 110% and uh, they were all in with me. Yes, I was all in with them. Uh, see, yeah, Marcus Aurelius, you know, the Roman emperor, and I know that you've read you know, the classics and, and a lot of the masters. Yeah, during the Antonine Plague, yeah, he basically sold his belongings to keep the populace of Rome as healthy as he could have them be at that point in time. And this is, you know, 102 AD or something like that. But as an emperor, you know, rather than just saying it's, it's all about me, you know, I'm in service too. There's compassion here. It's, I'm making tough choices. I've got to make very tough choices. Uh, and that, that's, you know, that's what the center of distribution notion is about. Um, Absolutely. The idea of um, being fulfilled and, and the book fulfilled, you know, we were talking prior to uh, you know, beginning the recording on this uh, about a little giveaway. Uh, and sure. what I'd like sure. to, and this is something that I haven't done before on the, on the podcast. And so I want to, I want to you know, just make sure that we're getting all the T's crossed the I's dotted, dotted here. But, you know, when we get this uh, up online and, and if, it's, if you're listening to it, it's obviously online right now. Um, uh, Simon is, um, got, you know, this unbelievable book fulfilled the secrets of an entrepreneur in search of success. And he found happiness. Now we're going to give five copies of this book away, five signed copies of this book away. And Simon is going to be the judge here. Uh, so when you listen to this, uh, I want you to make comments and the, the, the best comments are going to be the ones that get awarded the five signed books. 
Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll need to have some contact information from you, but uh, we'll reach out to you if you post it on, uh, yeah, because it'll be posted up on, on LinkedIn. It'll be posted up on my Facebook channel as well as all of the regular uh, places. So if you're listening, the, the first five that come in that are the best five, we're going to be giving away five autograph copies of Simon's book, Fulfilled. Absolutely, right? absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I really want to give this, this, this uh, books away because I believe in that. I believe in, in in giving. So if you put something there that it's uh, related to the book or something that you did that changed your life or someone else's life or something that you did to to make someone else happy, a nice story, and you can tag Blaine and you can tag myself there. Um, just let you know we will read them all and the ones that are uh, the best will get a signed copy of Fulfilled uh, on your mail. Great. And, and I will throw in a signed copy of Compassionate Capitalism as well. Awesome. So you'll get, awesome. you'll, you'll, get two a, books. you'll get a twofer. <laughs> you get a twofer one here. <laughs> awesome. 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 So everybody will be happier. <laughs> happier. Exactly. Happier. Simon, we're going to be uh, bringing it to a close here. Real quick last question. Um, and this kind of a philosophical question. How are you leaving it better than you found it? Whatever it means to you. How are you leaving it better than you found it? So I think that every day is different and I'm living it better every day. <clears throat> when I started this company, I had no knowledge about what I wanted. Then I started building a thing, building something. And then I started, you know, creating a company. Then the company was big. And then the company started growing internationally. And then, you know, I realized that growth without happiness, it's not growth. That success without health is not success. Success without friends is not success. That you cannot be happy only the weekends, that your life is too short to be happy only the weekends. That we need to be as happy as we can every single minute because one day we're not gonna be here. So I'm living at its best. I'm living a fulfilled life. I'm trying to be contagious on this topic. I want to be contagious with as many people as possible, Blaine. And I really want to change the world for the better. I really believe in peace. I really believe in the power of love. I really believe in the power of sharing. I really believe that we, if we come together, we can be an unbeatable force. And nobody can beat humanity if we behave, if we share, if we're compassionate, if we care for each other, if we respect our differences, and we see them as our strengths. You know, one day I had uh, this great conversation with Justin Trudeau. It was just like a maybe 10 minute conversation. And I told him, what's, what's Canada's strength? And he said, um, um, our, difference, our differences are our strength. You know, and that's what makes us a very good country. And I love that quote. I really love that. Because what, what you're good at, I'm not good at. And if we come together, we're good at two things and we're stronger together. So that's, that's exactly how it come, came up. So I really believe in that and I'm living the dream. I have a very, very uh, nice group of people around me that when I'm down, they help me up. And when I'm sad, because it's okay not to be okay sometimes, right? And sometimes the happiest person in the world cries. I lost my dad a year and a half ago, a year ago, I'm sorry. And my mother-in-law a year and a half ago, and then my father-in-law three months ago. It's it's been oh, hectic. Uh, so I've been I've been having too many losses, and it's okay to cry, and it's yeah. great, okay to be sad sometimes. And then when you come up and you realize that you're living life, and this is life, you can smile again, and you are stronger, and you're you 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 can just uh, move forward faster. Beautiful, beautiful, folks. Simon Cohen, Chairman of Henko. You get a copy of his book, Fulfilled. Simon, I want to thank you. This has been a great conversation. It was exactly what I was hoping it would be. <laughs> I love going down rabbit holes with you. <laughs> I look forward to going down many more. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, don't forget to buy the book at Amazon. It's, it's, it's a book that has a purpose. Every single penny that I make on the book, it's going for charity. So, so just don't forget to buy it right there at Amazon. Beautiful. Beautiful. Again, the book is Fulfilled. The Secrets of an Entrepreneur Who in Search of Success Found Happiness. This is Blaine Bartlett. You've been listening to uh, The Soul of Business with Blaine Bartlett. You can find out more about what I'm up to at blainebartlett.com. And until next time, 
Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye. Thank you.